the International Soccer Preview. We are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to our continuation of Series 19. This one looking at the players of the 2023 Asian Cup due to be played in January 2024. This episode is looking at the players of Japan. Here we go! Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. I'm Kevin and this is Series 19 on the players of the 2023 Asian Cup, played in 2024. This episode covers Japan's players. We're doing this media cast in two parts. Part one is a look at the candidates and the squad and their likelihood of making it. Uh, we think we went into too much detail in previous player media cast. We actually did Japan during the 2022 World Cup. Uh, so this time we're aiming for a lighter, more listener-friendly version, uh, kind of more of a narrative approach uh, in this case. Part two will come out when the squad lists are released and the final squad selected. We think that will be in late December or early January. And at that time, we'll go back over the list that we create here and see who made it and who didn't. And we'll also cover uh, a few other things, which I'll talk about more at the end. And um, we have made a separate video on what, we, uh, what we'll be covering over the next nine months. YouTube watchers can see the link for that on the screen, and it can also be found in the show notes for both watchers and listeners. In short, we are currently focused on the Asian and African Cups, with both of those taking place in early 2024. And we've also started coverage of the World Cup 2026 qualifying. So this episode will be divided into three sections. Section one, where we give and discuss some general information on the team. Section two, the main part, where we look at the main candidates in each position and their likelihood of making it. And section three, uh, just a short, se a short section where we give uh, any closing thoughts and we preview part two in a bit more detail. Let's begin then, and um, section one. We're gonna give some general information, so some comments on the squad. Uh, beginning with some observation, I'm gonna to refer to the uh, the uh, media cast we did for the 2022 World Cup here, which was actually uh, in the section we're talking about. So when we look at the player participation, we're going to consider uh, what they've done over the past two years. And for Japan, that is uh, fully 26 games that they've played over the past two years. That's a lot. Um, however, uh, we did do the media cast of the World Cup in 2022. So for some, some things, that's going to be uh, our starting point. For example, the narrative of the positions, um, we're going to look at what they did in the World Cup and then what they've done since that time. So, um, uh, yeah, so that uh, tournament, of course, took place in December of 2022. Uh, and so the uh, games leading up to that, uh, not so important, uh, unless we're talking about player participation here. Uh, okay, um, I'm also going to uh, urge people to uh, check the uh, World Cup player media cast we did in 2022. So as I said at the beginning, we, we went into quite a bit of detail uh, in that and some of the players for Japan have a long history so um, if you want to uh, kind of get more details on the uh, history of, uh, of the especially veteran players we recommend going back and checking that out where we give the bios but in this case we are going to reduce the length of those bios um, and part of the reason for that is that they are juggling so many players here that we're going to give briefer bios uh, we um, uh, we will leave a link in the show notes to those media casts. There were two parts there uh, which can be reviewed. Uh, but the last point is related, that Japan is juggling a lot of candidates. Uh, so we have a lot of players kind of to uh, mention here. Uh, quite a few players who have not appeared since the World Cup, and many of these are veterans with a lot of caps. 
And uh, they may have retired from international soccer, but we're not dead sure because only one of them has officially announced his retirement. So um, maybe they're just being left off the team and maybe even a chance of coming back. Uh, meanwhile, they have brought in quite a few players uh, over the past little while to replace these veterans. And uh, both the manager and us in this media cast have a lot of players to juggle. So again, that's one of the reasons why we wanted to keep the uh, the uh, bios of the player a bit shorter. And uh, that actually leads nicely into the next section because we're going to look at players who are uh, retired, but I'm going to say retirements or players who are off the team, especially since the 2022 uh, World Cup. So again, these players have a long history with Japan and we won't go uh, into full detail, but we'll try to give an idea of their experience and um, when they last played. So uh, we begin with goalkeeper uh, Shiuchi Gondo, uh, Gonda. Uh, Shiuchi Gonda um, actually was with the team since 2010, but only had uh, 38 caps. I'm not sure I updated that since the World Cup. Uh, well, because uh, he played a few games in the World Cup, as we'll see. Uh, he's still playing club soccer. He was the starting keeper in the 2022 World Cup, but he uh, has not appeared since then. So uh, he may have uh, uh, 42 caps uh, there. Uh, and the next one is also a goalkeeper. Uh, it's I.G. Kawashima. And he was with the team since 2008 and has 95 caps. Uh, he's 40 years old now, but he is uh, still playing club soccer. Uh, he was a backup in the uh, 2022 World Cup, but actually the starter uh, in the 2018 World Cup um, there. And uh, he is the one who did announce his retirement after the World Cup. So uh, last appeared on the bench in the World Cup and then announced his retirement. Uh, next is veteran uh, defender Maya Yoshida. Uh, Maya Yoshida has not been selected since the World Cup, uh, hasn't officially announced his retirement, and in fact has, uh, has moved from Schalke in Germany to the LA uh, Galaxy in the USA, often considered a bit of a retirement move there. Maya Yoshida has 126 caps and 12 goals since uh, 2010. And uh, he was a starter in the um, uh, 2022 World Cup, in fact, captain of the team there, and uh, but not selected since uh, the World Cup. So Maya Yoshida, we, uh, again, a slim chance of them coming back, but... Um, we don't really expect to see him. And uh, next we have a uh, Yuto Nagatomo who uh, plays several positions there, um, primarily a left defender. And he has been with uh, Japan since 2008 with 142 caps and four goals. He's 37 years old and uh, um, was a starter in the 2022 World Cup, but uh, hasn't appeared since then. So a whole bunch of players like this. Uh, we also have Hiroki Sakai, uh, right back uh, since 2012 with Japan, 74 caps and one goal. He's only actually uh, 33 years old, so uh, maybe more of a chance of him uh, rejoining the team. He was a starter in the 2022 World Cup, but only in game one. Uh, he was subbed out of game one and lost his starting position uh, uh, there. And that was his last appearance for the national team also. We're getting closer to the end, but uh, unbelievable list of names here. Uh, next, we have central midfielder Gaku uh, Shibasaki. And he was with the team since 2014, but had 60 caps. Again, not that old, just 31 years old, but uh, hasn't uh, appeared uh, since the 22 2022 World Cup, uh, where he was on the roster, but actually saw no action. Um, he was uh, uh, their captain when they played in the 2019 Copa America, and also a starter in the 2018 World Cup. And I believe we're at the end of the list here with Yuya Osaka. 
uh, Yuya Osaka uh, with Japan since 2013, uh, 57 caps and an impressive 24 goals, just 33 years old here too, um, but he hasn't played uh, in a tournament for the national team since the 2019 uh, Asian Cup. He wasn't selected uh, uh, for the World Cup there. Uh, however, he has played, um, uh, or he did play up until February 2022, so uh, we don't expect to see him. I think he kind of fell out of favor with the, uh, with the manager there. Okay, so those are the players who are retired or seemingly off the team. And uh, let's move on to the next thing, which is talking about the club affiliations of the Japanese players. So uh, only about a quarter of the players uh, are with clubs in Japan now. Um, not many, and we'll take a look at the clubs they play for outside of the country. But in fact, uh, no single Japanese club is represented more than twice among their recent call-ups. So unlike a lot of other countries where we see the players coming from uh, one or two teams, uh, it's more spread out in Japan. Uh, but the, the teams that nevertheless are uh, uh, most represented here, the uh, by main domestic clubs, I'm really uh, talking about where most of the players or where uh, players seem to be coming from. So uh, these aren't necessarily a list of the biggest teams in Japan. Uh, nevertheless, Kashima Antler seems to provide several players, or uh, at least two. Uh, um, I think the numbers are quite low here. Urawa Red Diamonds, Urawa Red Diamonds uh, there, and Yokohama F Marinos. Uh, three teams, but as I say, uh, players come from a variety of teams. Uh, when we look at the clubs outside the country, uh, all of them are with European clubs except for uh, one who recently moved to the USA, uh, as I mentioned, my Yoshida. Uh, otherwise, it's all European clubs, and we could compile a big long list of, of names, but they have uh, some with kind of... Uh, uh, big clubs, but most of them with uh, maybe second or third tier clubs in Europe. So uh, in the English Premier League, we have a play with Arsenal, uh, Liverpool and Brighton. Um, and then in all of the big countries across Europe. So we have uh, um, Monaco in the French League, Sporting Lisbon, Lazio in Italy. Uh, there were players with some big German clubs. Uh, especially Borussia Dortmund, but there aren't any more. So Borussia Mönchengladbach is probably the biggest German club uh, represented. And then uh, in Belgium, Standard Liège uh, has. And I'll make a special mention of Celtic in Scotland, which has uh, three Japanese players uh, on the roster there. Okay, that's an overview of the club affiliation. Now let's move on to talk about their recent games. So um, 26 games over the past two years, but this is one where we'll take it just from the World Cup in 2022, December 2022. So um, we have uh, four games there in December of 2022 because they passed the group stage. And those teams were uh, Germany, Costa Rica, Spain and Croatia. Uh, we also have all the friendlies that they played in 2023. Uh, that was two of them in March of 2023, Uruguay and Colombia. Two of them in June of 2023, uh, El Salvador and Peru. Two in September of 2023, Germany and Turkey. And two recently in uh, October, we're doing this uh, media cast at the end of October here, and that is Canada and Tunisia that they played. Now, we're not uh, particularly interested in the results uh, here because we're just looking at the player podcast, but uh, I will say that um, they're on a six-game winning streak uh, all the way from uh, June um uh, to the present, they've won all of those games. In truth, they did play uh, five of them at home, but they even won 4-1 uh, in Germany, which was uh, impressive. But in fact, we're more interested in the lineups that they had uh, for these games. And I won't go through exhaustively. I'll just try to uh, summarize um, 
Uh, summarize by saying that usual formation is uh, four players or four defenders at the back. Uh, in the last two games of the uh, World Cup there, they did have a three-man central defense, um, but otherwise it's been uh, four defenders all the way. So two centre-backs and a right back and a left back. Uh, the other kind of pattern is that uh, up front it is um, one or two players. I'm sure I've seen three, though. Yeah, in the last two games of the World Cup, the formations were a bit odd. It was uh, a 3-2-2-2-1. So that's ostensibly a 3-4-3 with the midfield divided into uh, two lines, a 3-2-2-1, and also the forward line divided into three lines. But it's uh, really a 3-4-3. So there they did have three forwards. Otherwise, it's uh, uh, usually one or two. So um, let's talk about their recent formations, which basically uh, covers uh, or, or summarizes the situation and uh, recently a 4-2-3-1 four, four, or a 4-4-2 four, four, has been favoured. Okay, and then over the last uh, eight friendlies, they actually did two times have a 4-3-3 uh, as well. Maybe I'll write that in. Um, uh, but just a couple of times. Anyway, uh, four at the back uh, is uh, a, a constant there and we'll finish this section by looking at their upcoming games so their games in november uh is when world cup uh 2026 qualifying begins in october it was a preliminary round and we did do uh, a series of podcasts which was quite interesting i found they uh, covering some of the teams we rarely get a look at because they get knocked out in the preliminary round so some of the weaker teams uh in asia and actually uh, Japan starts with one of those weaker teams, so it's two games in November, and the first one is at home to Myanmar. Uh, they uh, defeated Macau in the preliminary round there, and then the second one uh, is away to Syria, so ostensibly an away game. It's actually uh, being played in Saudi Arabia in um, uh, Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. So uh, when we look at these games, Myanmar at home, they can be a bit experimentative, we think. Uh, um, but probably against Syria, uh, they'll put their best foot forward. So uh, that might give us a, a closer hint as to what we can expect in the Asian Cup. And uh, they had scheduled a friendly, uh, a pre-tournament friendly. Uh, so just one so far, but we wouldn't be surprised if they scheduled a few, a few more. And uh, for that friendly, they're playing Thailand at home uh, in December prior to the Asian Cup. Okay, uh, let's move to part two, where we start looking at the candidates. And we begin with the manager. Sometimes we look at the uh, kind of the previous manager, uh, if it's been recent. But in the case of Japan, it's not. Uh, Hajimi Moriyasu has been their manager since 2018, so we didn't see any point in looking at the previous manager in this case. Hajimi Moriyasu uh, has been, as I said, manager of the national team since 2018. He was uh, manager of the under-23 team before that, and then he was with Sanfrees Hiroshima in Japan. So at first he was actually picking a lot of players from San Fris Hiroshima, but we don't find it as heavily represented uh, in the in the recent players there. So he guided them uh, through the Asian Cup in 2019, through the Copa America in 2019, where they brought a youth team, uh, some of those players now coming through, and uh, through the 2022 World Cup. Okay, that is the manager, and we move on to goalkeepers. So we're going to uh, make a list of the keepers, and I'll point out, as I always do, that uh, if the player's name is in grey, it means they haven't been through a, a tournament, and if it's in black, they have been through a tournament. So uh, let's begin with goalkeepers, and I'm actually going to start with uh, the player who is off the squad, uh, Gonda uh, Shiuchi, because he's going to figure into the uh, narrative that we build uh, as a summary to this part. So Shiuchi Gonda 
uh, their starting keeper in the World Cup in 2022, but now uh, hasn't played since then, so we consider him uh, off the squad. Uh, we have two likely candidates, Keisuke Osaka, uh, sorry, Keisuke Os Osako as a likely candidate, and also Daniel Schmidt as a likely candidate. And then we have some possible candidates in uh, Kosuke Nakamura, uh, Zion Suzuki, and um, uh, Ryosuke uh, Kojima. Sorry, I have the uh, colors wrong with him. I'm just fixing it. Uh, Ryosuke uh, Kojima is the third possible candidate and then we have one who uh, is possible but unlikely and we kind of um, decide whether to put them on the list or not uh, this is Kosei Tani and he played one game in the EAFF Cup that was in July of 2022 so well before the World Cup and uh, he was also on the bench seven times after that however the last time he appeared on the bench was in March 2023. I think that's recent enough for us to at least add him to the list, even though we consider him an unlikely candidate. Uh, and then we have uh, another player who seems to be off the squad. We mentioned him in the veteran section, uh, Aiji Kawashima, uh, who we won't add to the list uh, because he's 40 years old now and he announced his retirement, so he's not going to be uh, a possible candidate. Okay, let's take a look at some of these uh, at these players. So we begin with Keisuke Osako, our likely candidate. And uh, he's been with the team since 2019 and has six caps. Uh, and he's with Sam Fries Hiroshima. So he was one of those players brought through uh, by the manager, uh, probably due to their club association. He was a starter for that youth squad in the 2019 Copa America. However, uh, he was replaced after the first game. And uh, then he, he was off the team uh, for two and a half years until he returned in June 2022 and started four of their remaining 22 games uh, and was on the bench for eight matches. So uh, seven out of the 2022 he wasn't selected for. And we consider him likely because he was selected for the last eight games and started three of them. So a candidate for taking over the starting position is Keisuke Osaka. Uh, the other uh, main candidate is Daniel Schmidt. So he's been with the team since 2018 and has 14 caps. And um, he was a backup keeper in the 2019 Asian Cup and in the 2022 World Cup. Uh, he started five of their 26 games from uh, over the past two years, and he subbed in for two and was on the bench for uh, 14 matches. He missed just five matches, and three of those were the EAFF Cup. But worryingly, two of them were the last two matches uh, here in October of 2023. So he seemed a definite substitute and perhaps even the second string keeper uh, until he wasn't selected for the last two games. However, he's been selected regularly enough over the past two years that we consider Daniel Schmidt a likely candidate uh, to make it to the uh, Asian Cup. Uh, we have three possible candidates. The first is Kosuke Nakamura, and he has been with the team since 2017, but just eight caps. He was a backup keeper for the 2018 uh, World Cup, uh, but hasn't seen uh, any tournament action since then. Uh, he returned after a two-year absence, so kind of been on and off the team uh, over the years, actually, but most recently returned after a two-year absence in June of 2023 to start two of their remaining six games. And he was on the bench for two matches too, so seemed to be making a comeback. However, he was injured for the last two matches in October. Uh, and as of yet, we have an unknown return date for him, but that's unfortunate for him just as he was kind of making his way uh, back into the team. Uh, he is injured. So we'll have to update that in the uh, in part two of the podcast. Uh, so Kosuke Nakamura, uh, a possible candidate. Uh, next, the second of three possible candidates is Zion Suzuki. 
and uh, he has been with the team since 2022 and has two caps. He's just 21 years old. And he got his first uh, start, his first game in that EAFF Cup, the East Asian uh, Football Federation Cup. That's the local tournament in July of 2022. And then was off the team for 15 months. But he returned in October, uh, I'm guessing, to replace Kos uh, Kosuke Nakamura, who was injured. Uh, returned in October and started one of their two remaining games and was on the bench for the other. So uh, coming in, probably to replace an injury, uh, but the fact that he started the most recent game uh, makes him a possible candidate. And uh, finally, we have Ryosuke Kojima. Uh, he has been with the team since 2019, but has no caps. Uh, he was on the roster, though, uh, for the 2019 Copa America, uh, a backup keeper there actually the third uh, string keeper, so he didn't get onto the field. And uh, he uh, returned, uh, was basically off the team after that, but returned after a four-year absence also uh, in October 2023, so uh, for the last two matches. And uh, he was on the bench for both of those, so uh, probably uh, less likely than Zion Suzuki, who at least got a start. Uh, okay, and uh, let us finish then with a summary, a bit of a narrative. So we have uh, Siuchi Gonda, the veteran uh, Sh Shuichi, sorry, my mouth isn't working properly. Uh, Shuichi Gonda uh, was the keeper during the World Cup, but has not played since, so they need to replace their starting keeper. But it really has been mixed since. Uh, Schmidt played the first two. And then Osaka played the next three. Um, it's been a mix of those players. And then we saw that uh, Zion Suzuki uh, started the most recent game. So the starting position is up for grabs. So our uh, uh, bench positions at the Asian Cup, really no clear picture here. But we do consider uh, Keisuke Osaka and Dan Daniel Schmidt likely candidates to uh, make it to the Cup. Otherwise, we're not sure. Okay, let's move on to defenders, and we begin in the central defense. And uh, we're going to start here too with uh, the uh, with the veteran who is ostensibly off the team, Maya Yoshida. But since he's still playing at the club level and hasn't officially retired, we think he might uh, make it back to the cup. And we're putting him on at this point because he features uh, in the narrative. Uh, meanwhile, the players who uh, have been playing more recently uh, are Ko Itakura, who is a definite candidate, uh, Shogo Taniguchi, also a definite candidate, uh, uh, Takahira Tomiyasu, uh, a likely candidate, Takahiro Tomiyasu, um, a possible candidate in Koki Machida, and then um, a possible but unlikely player that we will put on the list, but which I'll deal with quickly here, Ayuma Seko. So actually, he got off to a good start uh, with the national team there in March of 2023. Um, he started one of their games and was subbed in for two and on the bench for one, but then uh, wasn't selected for the last four games, so in September and October, uh, wasn't selected. So we consider him uh, possible but unlikely here. And uh, we'll go back to look at the players who are more likely to uh, make it. Starting with Ko Itakura. So uh, he has been with the team since 2019 and has 22 caps and uh, one goal. Uh, he plays for Borussia Mönchengladbach in Germany but was actually with Manchester City uh, in England from 2019 to 2022, though, he was mostly loaned out. Uh, he was part of that Copa America squad. That was his first tournament in 2019, uh, but uh, became a starter in the 2022 World Cup. And uh, we have him as a definite candidate here because he started 15 of their 26 games over the past two years. He was subbed in for two and on the bench for two. 
uh, injured and suspended for a few, and then uh, only four matches that he was not uh, called up for. So uh, Ko Itakura, a definite candidate. Uh, the other definite candidate is Shogo Taniguchi, and he has two, uh, 22 caps and one goal since his first one in 2015. And um, uh, the only tournament he's played in is uh, the recent 2022 World Cup. He didn't appear in games one and two there, but gained a starting position uh, for the last two games. And over the past two years, he has started 14 of their 26 games, uh, subbed in for three and on the bench for seven. So only two matches that Shogo Taniguchi uh, was not called up for. So he's a definite candidate. And um, let's move on to uh, Takahiro Tomiyasu. So um, he has been with the team since 2018, 36 caps and one goal. And he plays for Arsenal. Uh, in England, and he has been part of uh, all the squads that we've been talking about recently, the 2019 Asian Cup, where he was a starter. Uh, one of the few players actually to start in both tournaments, because he uh, came back in the summer of that year to start in the Copa America 2019. And in the World Cup in 2022, he was a substitute uh, in that cup. So over the past two years, he started five of their 26 games, uh, and subbed in for three, he was on the bench for three and then out with two separate injuries for six games and not selected for nine others. So not used as much as you would think an Arsenal player uh, would be used. Uh, he did return from knee surgery uh, that he had in um, over the summer and he played in the last four matches. So they are using him more in recent times. That is Takahiro Tomeyasu, a likely candidate. Uh, and our uh, possible candidate is Kochi Machi, uh, Koki Machida. Uh, Koki Machida um, has been with the national team just since 2023. So you'll see his name is in gray there because he's never been in a tournament. Uh, he got his first uh, appearance on the bench in March of 2023 and started two of their remaining eight games. Uh, he was subbed in for one and on the bench for three. So just two of those eight games that he wasn't called up for. And uh, he's being increasingly used. He plays for uh, Union St. Gilois in Belgium. That was a team that uh, really did well over the last couple of years. He and... Uh, uh, Mitoma uh, were part of their uh, rise in the Belgian league there, and uh, Koki Machida, our possible candidate here. Uh, okay, and uh, we talked about the possible but unlikely candidate, but he doesn't really figure in the narrative. So we'll we'll move on to the summary narrative here, and say that in the World Cup it was. Um, um, Maya Yoshida and Ko Itakura as the uh, main central defense partnership. Uh, and then in the last two games, when it was a three-man defense, it was Taniguchi who, uh, Taniguchi who came in, uh, I believe, on the left side to uh, complete that central defense. Uh, Itakura has remained after the World Cup, but Yoshida is gone. And he's been replaced by all of the players uh, below. So it's been a bit of a mix and match as to who uh, stands beside Itakura. Uh, so Taniguchi has been used the most. Uh, but then uh, uh, more recently, Tomiyasu. But there's no clear partner for Itakuru yet. Uh, and even his claim is a little bit uncertain because he was benched for two of the last three matches. But we do think Itakura is more of a uh, guaranteed starter than is Taniguchi or Tomiyasu. So we will have to see. Uh, that's a fairly small stable of uh, players for the um, central defense. Usually there are five or six that they bring to the cup. But maybe some of the left and right backs uh, or even defensive midfielders that we look at soon uh, can fill in. 
uh, in those positions, although we haven't seen that over the past uh, over the past year. Uh, okay, let's move on to talk about uh, the left backs, and we begin with Yuto Nagam Nagatoma as a uh, oh as a uh, leaving veteran. So uh, he seems to be off the squad now. Um, but he does figure in the narrative. That's why we're introducing him at the beginning. But he hasn't played since the 2022 World Cup. So we're basically looking at the players who are going to replace him. And uh, Hiroki Ito is a likely candidate. And we'll come back to him. And then we have uh, Yuta Nakayama as a possible candidate. And uh, we have, uh, well, I'll just say his name, uh, Sho Sasaki, uh, but uh, we're not going to put him on the list because he was only uh, a player in the East Asian Football Federation Cup in July 22. So they don't always uh, use kind of their starters for that tournament. Uh, Japan does bring some of their starters to that tournament. Okay, let's look back at the candidates we have then. And... Um, uh, Ita, uh, uh, sorry, Hiroka, Hiroki Ito. So Hiroki Ito has been with Japan since 2022 uh, with 12 caps and one goal. He plays for Stuttgart in Germany and he was part of the World Cup 2022 squad, uh, but he only appeared as a substitute in one game uh, there. And he got his first cap in June of 2022. He started 10 of their remaining 22 games. Uh, and he was on the bench for six and not selected for, for four others. Uh, and that includes the East Asian Football Cup. So basically always called up. And in fact, it looks like he was uh, uh, starting to move into the position even before the World Cup, even if he didn't play that much in the World Cup. So... Uh, he looks like the replacement there for Nagatomo. Uh, next, the possible candidate is Yuta Nakayama, and he has been with Japan since 2019 with 17 caps and uh, uh, no goals. He plays for Huddersfield in England. That's a, a second division, or uh, sorry, a lower league club anyway. And um, Yuta Nakayama returned after an 11-month absence uh, due to injury. He returned in October of 2023, so just recently, and he started both of their remaining games. So that almost constitutes a challenge for the position, uh, for the starting position there. Uh, and that's it for candidates. So we'll summarize. I'll be repeating uh, a little bit here. It was uh, Yuta Naga Nagatoma in the World Cup. Uh, and after that, actually, three different players were tried out over the first three games, uh, including left midfielder uh, Morishita, who we'll meet soon. But uh, Hiroki Ito seemed to win the position, playing four of the first six games. However, on... Um, on the return of Nakayama from his injury in October, he seemed to seize the position by playing both games. So it'll be interesting to see who they use uh, as the left back in November. Meanwhile, we move on to the right back position and we have um, uh, a couple of outgoing candidates who we'll mention because uh, I think they figure in the narrative. Anyway, Hiroki Sakai, who we mentioned as a retiring veteran there, and uh, Miki Yamane, who we didn't mention because he's not really a veteran, although he, uh, he was a sub in the World Cup 2022, uh, but hasn't played since. So uh, we won't talk about them. Uh, except for uh, to see how they feature in the narrative. Uh, we will talk about Yukinara Sugawara, who is our likely candidate for this position. And then uh, two possible candidates, uh, Seiya Meikuma and uh, Dake, uh, Deiki Hashioka. Um, Okay, and let's go back. None of these players have tournament experience. Uh, Yukinari Sugawara was on the team since 2020. He has seven caps 
uh, but he wasn't selected for the World Cup in 2022. He plays for Azi Alkmaar in the Netherlands, and uh, uh, I mentioned he was on the team since 2022, but he um, uh, was off the team for two years uh, after that. He returned in March of 2023 and started six of their remaining eight games and was on the bench for two others. So he looks like uh, the likely candidate to take over this position. Um, Seya Mekuma is the possible candidate. He's been with the team since 2023 and has two caps. And he got his first appearance on the bench in September of 2023. He started two of their remaining four games and was on the bench for two others. So it looks like Seya... Uh, Seya Mekuma also under consideration for this position. Uh, Deiki Hashioko, though, he, he will just be a substitute. Uh, he's been on the team since 2019 and has seven caps. And he also returned after a, an almost two-year absence in March of 2023. But he didn't start any games. He was subbed in for five and on the bench for one. So uh, only two matches that he wasn't selected for. Uh, and so uh, he's a possible candidate to make it to the cup, though we think it's unlikely that he'll be a starter. So let's summarize the position uh, then. So Hiroki Sakai uh, started uh, the first game of the cup and then Yamane uh, the second game. And then they didn't use the position in games three and four. If you recall, uh, it was the three-man back line, the 3 2 2 2, two one uh, where the left-back position pushed up to the left wing on that side. Um, and in the, case, uh, in the case of the left side, it was the left-back pushing up. But on the right side, it was a right midfielder uh, that was used, so not a, a right-back pushing up. Uh, they went back to a four-man defense after the cup, and Sugawara played six of the eight games, and Mekuma played two of them. Um, he played the sixth and seventh game with Sugawara on the bench for those games. So uh, it looks like he's being considered as a candidate. Sugawara, though, did return for the last game uh, in, in October. So it seems that Sugawara is the starter, uh, but Mekuma perhaps making a bid uh, or otherwise will be the backup, whereas Hashioka is just a, a substitute and has never started. All right, that's the end of the defense, and we move on to the midfield, and we'll talk about defensive and central midfielders, um, kind of with one narrative here. And we begin with... Uh, a definite candidate. So we'll begin with uh, players coded as defensive midfielders and definite candidate Hidamasa Morita. Uh, also definite Waturu Endo and also definite Ayu Taka, uh, Tanaka. So three definite candidates here and then one possible candidate in Atsuki Ito. So let's look at uh, these players here. Uh, Hidemasi Morita has been with the team since 2018. He has 26 caps and two goals. And uh, his first tournament, though, was the 2022 World Cup. He was on the bench for game one, but then gained a starting position after that. And uh, over the past two years, uh, Hidemasi Morita has started 12 of their 26 games. He was subbed in for two and on the bench for four injured for three and then not selected for five matches so uh, called up most of the time uh, and we have Hidamasa Morita as a definite candidate uh, and by the way all the times that he wasn't selected uh, were all in 2022 so he's been called up consistently uh, since the World Cup uh, Waturo Endo has been with the team since 2015, so more of a veteran than most. He has 54 caps and two goals, and uh, he recently moved to Liverpool in England. He was with Stuttgart in Germany before that, uh, and he has been part of a uh, tournament squad since the 2018 World Cup. He was just on the roster there, uh, but he was part of the 
2019 Asian Cup and a starter in the 2022 World Cup. So uh, Waturu Endo has started 16 of their 26 games over the past two years, subbed in for four, on the bench for one, and not selected for just five matches, and three of those were the East Asian Football Federation Cup. So uh, uh, very consistently called up is uh, Waturu Endo, and uh, our third definite candidate is Ayo Tanaka. Uh, he's been with the team since 2019 with 22 caps and two goals, and he plays for Fortuna Dusseldorf in Germany. He was a starter uh, in the World Cup, but only in games one and three there, so not a consistent starter. Uh, over the past two years, he started 10 of their 26 games. He also subbed in for seven and was on the bench for four um, and injured for two matches. So the only three games he wasn't selected for were the East Asian Cup in July of 2022. So invariably called up is Ayo Tanaka, but starts a little less than the other two. He started 10 matches uh, compared to uh, Morita's 12 and Endo's 16. And our possible candidate is Atsuki Ito. So he's brand new, uh, called up since June 2023 and started one of their remaining six games and was subbed in for two and on the bench for three others. So called up consistently uh, since uh, June uh, there, Atsu Atsuki Ito. And before we do the narrative, we'll introduce the central midfielders since these positions often overlap. And here, as uh, players coded as central midfielders, we have uh, uh, two possible candidates. And uh, the first one is Rio uh, Hatate. Rio Hatate. And the other one is uh, Heao Kawabe. Uh, Kawabe. Okay, Ryo Hatate has been with Japan since 2022 and he has five caps and no goals. He's one of the three players who played for Celtic in Scotland. And um, he got his first appearance on the bench in March of 2022 and started four of the remaining games. He was subbed in for one and on the bench for two. Uh, but he was out with two separate injuries for four matches and not selected for 13 others. Um, and yeah, a bit of an odd story. He actually seems to, uh, it seems like they wanted to use him more recently. But uh, those injuries that we talked about, one of the spells was in March and one of them was in September. Uh, and then he started three of the four games in between and subbed into the others. So in recent times, he's been used more. Uh, and a lot of those absences were in 2022, a lot of those non-selections. So uh, it seems to depend on his health. And because he's been injured a couple of times, we don't really have a clear picture. Maybe the November games will help to clarify. The other uh, player is Hayao. Uh, Hayao Kawabe, and he has been with the team since 2021, but only uh, six caps in that time. He plays for uh, Standard Liège in Belgium, but was with Wolverhampton uh, in England before that. Uh, he doesn't have any tournament experience. He wasn't selected for the World Cup there. Uh, in fact, he was off the squad during that time but returned after a two-year absence in June of 2023 and didn't start any games, but he was subbed in for two and on the uh, bench for two uh, and not selected for two matches. That would be uh, uh, the six games. So uh, he was called up four out of six times since June, uh, not as a starter, but as a sub. So we have uh, Hayao uh, Kawabe, as a possible candidate. So both of our central midfielders, uh, possible candidate. We also have uh, a retired veteran, uh, Gaku Shibasaki, but we won't add him to the list here because he doesn't uh, feature in the narrative. He was just on the bench for the 2022 World Cup. 
and hasn't played since. So now we can go back and do the narrative for both defensive and central midfielders. So um, the two uh, the two players playing in the central midfield uh, during the World Cup was a rotation of the first three players we met. So uh, Hidemasa, Hidemasa Morita, Waturu Endo, and Ayo Tanaka, all three of them rotating uh, uh, in the position. I think every one of them played with uh, uh, each other at least once. And these three players continue to rotate after the cup, um, including uh, situations where there are sometimes three midfielders. Uh, however, there are more players involved in the rotation. Uh, and so sometimes we do see uh, Ito, Atsuki Ito and Ryo Hatate uh, popping up as starters. And uh, even we see attacking midfielder, the roving midfielder, uh, Kamada, uh, coming back to play in this position. We'll talk about Kamada soon. He's kind of all over the field um, there. Okay, so this seems to be kind of a rotation uh, of the three main players with the uh, possible players kind of popping up once in a while, uh, except for Hawabi, who is never a starter. Hawabi, that is. Uh, okay, left midfielders. We only have one player uh, in this position, and I'll talk about the position uh, after introducing him. The one player we have is at the possible level, and his uh, it is uh, Roya uh, Morishita, uh, who we mentioned as playing as a left back one time. Uh, Roya Morishita, um, I, oh, I don't know if I did mention that now that I think about it, but I will. Uh, Roya uh, Morishita got his first cap in June of 2023 and started one of their remaining six games. And he was on the bench for three, but then not selected for the past uh, uh, two matches. So he only has one cap, and that one cap... Uh, uh, he started as a left back in his only start. So um, not selected for the last two. Uh, it doesn't look that good for him, but he is a possible candidate. Uh, Roya Morishita. And we'll talk about the position of left, left midfield. Uh, it only exists in a 4-3-3 formation. And that formation uh, they've used only twice. So it was never played by Morishita. It was played by the defensive midfielder Tanako and uh, Hatate, both of those who we just met. Uh, otherwise, though, they use a formation that requires a left winger or a left attacking midfielder. So um, not much call for this position. But we'll see that on the right side, it's a little bit different. Uh, because the right, the player coded as a right midfielder is actually uh, more versatile. So uh, that player is definite candidate Junya Ito, and uh, we also have a possible candidate in Ritsu Doan. Uh, Ritsu Doan is a sorry, a likely candidate. Uh, Ritsu Doan is actually coded as an attacking midfielder, but we're putting him here because uh, he kind of plays the same role as Junior Ito, which I'll describe shortly. Uh, shortly, But let's look at these two players. First, uh, Junior Ito has been with the team since 2017 with 49 caps and 13 goals, and he plays for Stade Reims in France. And uh, he's been part of the uh, Asian Cup in 2019, uh, started only a B-team game there. And, uh, but he was a starter in the 2022 World Cup, so he's becoming a more important player for Japan over the years. Uh, and over the past two years, he started 14 of their 26 games, and he was subbed in for six besides. He was on the bench for three, so the only three games he was not selected for were the EAFF Cup in July, the East Asian Cup. So always called up but actually only starts about half of the games, uh, Junior Ito. Uh, again, the other player in this position, uh, currently at least, or recently, is Ritsu Doan. Ritsu Doan has been with Japan since 2018, and he has 39 caps and six goals. 
and uh, he was part of the Asian Cup squad in the uh, 2019 Asian Cup and also uh, called up for the World Cup. Uh, he appeared in all four games there. He started two and was subbed in for two. And over the past uh, two years, he started uh, only eight of their 26 games, but he was subbed in for 10 matches uh, and on the bench for one. Uh, so there are only five matches that he wasn't selected for. So that was also the East Asian Cup. That was three of them. But then the last two matches in October 2023, he also wasn't called up for. Uh, but I'm kind of thinking that's a temporary thing, uh, whether he was struggling with an injury or something, a small injury, uh, because I do see Ritsu Doan as a likely candidate. Let's talk about the position, though, because it's a bit different than on the left side. Uh, Ito, uh, Junior Ito played three of the four World Cup games, and uh, the reason he is used more is because he's more versatile. Uh, he can be used as a right midfielder or a right winger or a right attacking midfielder. And actually, uh, Doan plays the same role recently, even though he's coded as an attacking midfielder. So Doan did replace him uh, once in the cup um, and uh, replaced him a bit more often over the last eight friendlies. But sometimes they're on the field together because uh, we may see, for example, Ito as a winger and Doan as a right forward or something like that, which allows them to be on the field together. Uh, overall, though, it still seems primarily uh, Junior Ito's position as a starter with Doan as a backup or perhaps Doan coming in uh, in a different position. Okay, let's move on to left with left wingers and uh, kind of uh, following on what we talked about there for the left midfielder position. This position could be left winger, could be left attacking midfielder, or sometimes these players will play as the left forward uh, also. Uh, so let's look at the candidates, and we have Karo Matoma as a likely candidate, uh, Keito Nakamura also a likely candidate, and Yuki Soma as a possible candidate. And uh, we'll take a look at these players. So Karo Matoma uh, currently tearing up the English Premier League with Brighton, but as we mentioned, he was also part of that. Uh, Union Saint Gilois team, the Belgian team that uh, that had a good period and were featuring in the uh, Europa League there. Uh, so Karen Matoma has been with the team since 2021. He has 18 caps and seven goals, and uh, he's 26 years old. And he was part of the World Cup squad uh, there, but he was just a substitute. He subbed into all four games actually. And over the past two years, he started nine of their 26 games, but he was also subbed in for eight and on the bench for one. So he was injured for two and not selected for six of them. But uh, just like the uh, Ritsu Doan there, three of those were the East Asian Cup and two of them were the most recent matches. So he was missing uh, for the October 2023 games there which is a bit of a concern but uh his form is so good that it would be uh hard to imagine them not bringing him to the cup the other uh possible or oh, sorry the other likely candidate is keito nakamura so he's been with the team just since 2023 uh he got his first cap in march of 2023 and then he started two of their remaining eight games and subbed in for two and was on the bench for four others. So he's been called up uh, consistently since the World Cup, uh, since after the World Cup, and um, we consider him a likely candidate. That's Keito Nakamura, who plays for Stade Reims uh, in France. We saw another player too uh, with that same club. And uh, the possible candidate is Yuki Soma. So Yuki Toma has been with the team since 2019. He has 11 caps and four goals and uh, is playing in Japan with uh, Nagoya Grampus. And he uh, was part of the World Cup squad in 2022, uh, but um, he appeared only in game two, uh, although he did start that game. 
uh, he uh, returned after a two and a half year absence in July of 2022 and started four of their remaining 18 games. He was subbed in for four and on the bench for four and uh, not selected for six matches. However, four of those six matches were the last four games. So he wasn't called up in September or October. Um, so uh, Yuki Soma uh, possible, but in recent terms, uh, looking uh, a bit less likely than that. So let's summarize this position. And once again, the position, think of it more as the upper left quadrant of the field, whether it be a left winger, left attacking midfielder, or left forward, depending on the formation. Uh, in the uh, World Cup, it was actually the right winger, Kubo, who we're going to meet soon uh, in the first game, and then Soma in the second game, and then the uh, ubiquitous attacking midfielder Kama uh, Kamada in games three and four, playing as a left forward. Uh, after the World Cup, it was Mitoma, Karu Mitoma, for five friendlies in a row, and then Nakamura for two, and then attacking midfielder Hatate uh, in the last game. So it uh, seems to be a bit of an unsettled position, um, although um, Karu Matoma uh, is in good form, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him there in the cup uh, if he's healthy. Okay, let's move over to the right wing. And it's a much more stable situation here. We have uh, Ta uh, Takafusa Kubo as a definite candidate, and he's the only uh, candidate on this side, uh, but we'll talk about that uh, soon. Anyway, uh, Ta uh, Takafusa Kubo is currently with Real Sociedad in Spain. He was with Real Madrid uh, before that, so he's been in, in Spain uh, for, for a little while there. And... Um, Takafusa Kubo was part of the uh, Copa America 2019 squad there where they brought in a youth team. And he is youth, he's just 22 years old, and has been with Japan since 2019 with 28 caps and two goals. So a young uh, man working his way uh, firmly into the squad. So he was a starter in that 2019 Copa America, and he was a starter in the World Cup in 2022, at least uh, games one and three there. He actually subbed out of both of them at, uh, at halftime. Uh, over the past two years, uh, he has started nine of their 26 games, uh, but he's also subbed in for six and been on the bench for six. Uh, just five matches that he wasn't selected for, and three of them were the East Asian Cup. So almost always called up, but actually only starts about a third of the games, uh, Takafusa Kubo. Now let's talk about the position, because he doesn't often play in the position we're talking about. He sometimes plays as a right attacking midfielder or as a right forward, but also sometimes plays in the center as a central attacking midfield. So who is the one uh, filling this position? Well, we've already met them. It's uh, usually Junior Ito or Ritsu Doan who kind of uh, uh, move up into this position uh, on the right. So basically shared among those three players, uh, Junior Ito, Ritsu Doan, and Takafusa Kubo. Although Doan and Kubo uh, rove around a bit more than Ito does. Okay, we move on to the forward line, and that includes attacking midfielders. And we've already talked a couple of times about the roving Deichi Kamada, so we'll try to pin him down a little bit here. And uh, that's all we have uh, for candidates as attacking midfielder, keeping in mind that we moved a couple of them, because Ritsu Doan uh, is coded as an attacking midfielder uh, as well. And I think we moved one other player which I can't find right now. Um, uh, no, I may be thinking of the uh, right winger 
uh, Takafusa Kubo, who plays as a central attacking midfielder sometimes. But we'll get to that after introducing the player. So Deichi Kamada has been with the team since 2019, and he has 30 caps and six goals. And he plays for Lazio uh, in England, having been for quite a while before that with Eintracht Frankfurt in uh, Germany. Uh, and he wasn't selected for either of the tournaments in 2019, but he was selected as a starter uh, in the 2022 World Cup. Uh, and over the past two years, uh, da Daichi Kamada started 11 of their 26 games, and he was subbed in for three and on the bench for three, uh, and not selected for seven uh, uh, matches. Uh, but a bit like Ritsu and uh, one other player that we mentioned, uh, three of the matches he missed were the East Asian Cup, which is fair enough. But worryingly, two of the matches he missed were the October game. So there we have three players, uh, kind of uh, uh, regular players, not called up for the October game. So I wonder what's going on there. Although I think all three of them, uh, at least I kind of expect to see them returning in November and for the Asian Cup. But we'll have to see. Uh, um, as we've mentioned, Daichi Kamada is quite versatile. In fact, he doesn't play as a central attacking midfielder very much. Uh, but we've seen him in central defense. We've seen him on the light, right side. We'll see him as a left forward shortly. Uh, uh, he's kind of all over the place. So um, he did actually play central attacking midfielder in the first two games of the World Cup there. And then after that, they didn't really use the position except uh, the couple of times they had a 4-3-3 um, formation. I think that was twice during the friendlies. Uh, so it was Kamada once playing as central attacking midfielder and then uh, Kubo uh, playing there uh, once, uh, no, twice uh, uh, over that period. Okay, uh, we have one candidate who's a secondary striker, uh, and I am going to introduce him because uh, I think there's a possibility for him there, and that's uh, Takuma Nishimuru. Let me try that again. <laughs> Takuma uh, Nishimura. And uh, he got his first cap in the East Asian uh, Cup there in July 2022. He started five of their remaining 18 games and was subbed in for two uh, but he was not selected for uh, 12 matches, including the last six. So I think we will leave him on because he was there in March of 2023. So that's recent enough to give him uh, an outside chance of being on the squad. So uh, we have him as a possible but unlikely candidate. It's time to move on to our last category, the forwards. And uh, we're going to start with... Um, uh, the like uh, the definite candidate uh, Takuma Asano. Uh, uh, definite, not in terms of being a starter, but in terms of uh, making the squad, which uh, which is what this uh, these categories are for. They're not uh, really talking about starters and subs. They're talking about likelihood of making the squad for the twenty. 23 Asian Cup. So uh, Dezan Maeda, we consider a likely candidate, as well as Ay Ayasi Ueda. And we have a couple of po possible candidates too in uh, Kyogo Furuhashi. And I see I'm putting these players all in the wrong category there. So I'll just fix that up. So uh, possible candidate Kyogo Furuhashi and another possible candidate in uh, Takumi Minamino. And uh, we have one possible but unlikely candidate, so I'll deal with him and the next guy uh, in short notice here. So it's Shuto Machino. Uh, he was called up actually quite regularly, but then not selected for the last uh, six matches. So uh, we will put Shuto Machino uh, on the list here, but we won't introduce him because he's unlikely. And uh, we talked about veteran Yuya Osaka, uh, Yuya Osako, um, uh, 
uh, he was one of the veterans we talked about retiring, but we'll uh, just put him on the list as a player who seems to be off the squad. And he doesn't feature in the narrative because he wasn't uh, uh, selected for the World Cup in 2022. So let's look at the candidates that look like they have a, uh, a good chance of making it, beginning with Takuma Asano. So uh, Asano has been with Japan since 2015 with 47 caps and nine goals. He plays for Bochum in Germany. And uh, despite being on the squad since 2015, he didn't uh, reach a tournament uh, until the 22, uh, 2022 World Cup. That was his first tournament where he was subbed into all four games. So over the past two years, he's uh, started six of their 26 games, which may leave you wondering why we have him as a definite candidate. And the reason is, is that he was subbed in for nine uh, and on the bench for three. Uh, he was injured for two, and the six matches that he wasn't selected for were all in 2022. In other words, he's been called up very consistently uh, for the last 13 games. Uh, even though he starts only about a third of their games. So Takumo, uh, Takuma Asano, uh, a definite candidate to make the squad, but probably not a starter. Uh, the next candidate, the likely is uh, candidate, is Dezan Meida. I think my... Uh, my brain is uh, uh, stopping, is, is seizing up on me here. We'll try to get through this. Uh, Dezan Maida has started... Uh, no, I'll get to that in a second. Deza Maeda has been with Japan since 2019 and has 13 caps and three goals. He's one of the three Celtic players that uh, that we mentioned. And he was a starter in the 2019 Copa America. So one of the, the youth who got their start in that tournament and are now uh, kind of part of the senior squad. Uh, Deza Maeda was also a starter in the World Cup. He, he played three of the four games uh, there as a starter. Uh, over the past two years, though, he's only started four of their 26 games. Uh, he was subbed in for seven, though, and on the bench for six. And he was not selected for nine matches, including the last two. So that's our fourth player, I believe, uh, who's a regular candidate, but not called up in, in uh, October 2023. So... Um, I'm tempted to put him down to possible uh, here, but uh, we'll leave him as likely. Uh, three of his starts were in the World Cup, so he's mostly been uh, a substitute after that. And again, not called up for the for the last two games. In fact, I think I am going to move him down to uh, a possible candidate, uh, given what we've said there. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, uh, but let's look at the next candidate uh, who we also considered likely, at first at least, uh, Ayasi Ueda. Ayasi Ueda has been with the team since 2019 and has 17 caps and two goals. And uh, he was also part of the uh, Copa America youth squad there, uh, started uh, game one in that uh, tournament, but lost his starting position actually uh, just a substitute in the last two games. In the 2022 World Cup, he was called up to the squad, uh, but he appeared only in game two there. He started that, but was subbed out at halftime. Um, over the past two years, Ayasi Ueda had returned, had returned after a more than three-year absence in March of 2022, and he started five of their remaining 24 games uh, he was subbed in for six and on the bench for six and uh, injured for one, so uh, not selected for six matches. So I think that's good enough. Uh, called up about uh, more than two-thirds of the time uh, is Ayesa Ueda. Uh, and even though he's called up quite regularly, uh, he doesn't start much. So you're probably starting to wonder who is starting there. Uh AAC Ueda plays for uh, Feyenoord in the Netherlands, and we consider him a likely candidate. Okay, uh, next we have Kyogo Furuhashi, and he's been with the team since 2019. He has 21 caps and five goals, and he's the third player who plays for Celtic in Scotland. Uh, but despite being on the team since 2019, he has never been called up for a tournament. 
Uh, he was off the team for a little bit uh, during the World Cup period, in fact, and returned after a nine-month absence in June of 2023. But then he started three of their remaining six games. He was subbed in for two and on the bench for one. So I'd say he's a, a little stronger than a, a possible candidate here, um, uh, given his recent participation, but we'll keep him at the possible level there. And I'm just going to take a little drink of water, so I'm going to pause for a couple of seconds. Okay, the next candidate, also at the possible level, is Takumi Minamino. And uh, Minamino has been with the team since 2015, so uh, a, a relative veteran as far as it goes. 49 caps and 17 goals. Uh, he, was, uh, he was with Liverpool until 2022. He has since moved to Monaco in the French League. And uh, he was also part of that... Uh, no, no, he was not part of the Copa America squad. He was part of the uh, 2019 Asian Cup squad. Um, he was actually on the preliminary roster as far back as the 2015 Asian Cup squad, uh, but wasn't uh, didn't make the final cut there. But a starter in the 2019 Asian Cup and uh, in the World Cup uh, in 2022, he was a substitute coming into three games there. And... Um, uh, following his appearance at the uh, 2022 World Cup, he was off the team, but then returned in October of 2023 and started one of their remaining two games and subbed in for the other. So uh, coming back into the picture uh, from a recent absence is Takumi uh, Minamino. All right, and that is it for the forward. So we'll just finish by summarizing this position. Um, in the World Cup, Maeda started three of the games and Ueda uh, started one of them. And if you think about the formations that we talked about earlier, it was a single centre forward in all three or all four of the World Cup games. But since then, there's been a lot of experimentation, uh, both with the formations, uh, formations that include one, two or three forwards and in the players. So they don't seem to have landed on a starter, but one thing is uh, that Maeda is not one of them. So he's never really been playing as a forward, uh, or, or he's never really started uh, since the World Cup. Uh, it really is Asano, Takuma Asano, Ueda, and Furuhashi. Uh, all of them have had two starts over the uh, last little while. And then I think a couple of out-of-position players uh, have also been up there, including the ubiquitous Kamada uh, has been... Uh, I, I remember seeing him as a left forward um, there. Uh, okay, so uh, the forward position, very undecided. And uh, again, the November games may shed some light on this. Uh, and we'll have to see. So let's move on to the uh, section three of the podcast, which is a kind of a quick conclusion. Uh, any closing thoughts? Well, I didn't realize when I was preparing uh, just how many players, uh, uh, how many regulars were not selected for the October game. So that kind of took me by surprise a little bit. It was four in the end, regular players uh, not selected in October. And so a few players coming in uh, for those, uh, uh, I'm thinking of the goalkeepers especially, uh, but I think that was due to one of the goalkeepers being injured. Uh, anyway, uh, then and there are a couple of positions that seem uh, quite undecided uh, too, so I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the November games and then looking at the final rosters uh, to see uh, if we get more clarity on those positions. But uh, part two of the podcast will definitely uh, help to clarify a couple of those things. Also in part two, we will go over the squad here and then note which ones made the squad and which one didn't. So we'll be looking at notable non-selections that will be uh, players that we put as definite or likely who don't make the squad or surprise inclusions. That could be uh, players who are possible 
uh, but unlikely, or maybe some of those veterans coming back, which we didn't expect, or it could be a player that uh, is kind of in and around Japan but wasn't mentioned in this podcast. And then there's uh, always a couple of new players uh, who are maybe hot with their clubs and are selected for the uh, for the Asian Cup. So we'll update you on those players, and finally we'll update you on on the injuries. Uh, for the squad. In fact, a lot of them, uh, as of this time in October, late October, uh, uh, are uh, do uh, are carrying injuries. They just don't seem like a kind of long-term injuries. So uh, we were only going to mention the ones who are kind of off the team, uh, uh, off the team, uh, kind of for a period that extends beyond the Asian Cup, and we don't have any of those. Uh, yeah, but we will do an update on injuries in part two. And thanks for listening to part one. We hope you join us for part two. We originally planned to tag on our past, present, and future plans for the media cast, but we have instead decided to put a link to that 10 minute video in the show notes. It covers what we're working on and what we plan to do over the next nine months. I'd like to thank Navur Avanchan and Pixabay for the wonderful music you hear in this media cast. The title is called Arabic Trap. <laughs>